what's going on. This video is going to be super useful for you, um, especially if you are a female. Today we're going to go over how to maintain a dominant position, more specifically how to maintain mount. This is super important because once you get to a good position, you want to be able to keep it because if you can't keep it, <laughs> you might as well have never gotten it. <laughs> so when you finally get that really good position and you get a dominant position, um, if you haven't watched my other video about explaining all the positions in BJJ and why they are, um, what they are, why, they, why they're valued, the way they're valued, go back and watch that and then come and watch this so you can fully understand it. And when you find your passion, it ignites you as a person. You just feel awesome. Um, so we are going to get in today how to maintain mount, all right? And this is especially useful um, if you are like a female just starting because we are going to go over some tips and tricks so that you can maintain mount and maybe work on some submissions. But just maintaining mount is just getting to mount, period, <laughs> is a great feat. Uh, but to be able to maintain mount is a skill in and of itself. Um, so let's go over ways to maintain mount. All right. So this is the mount position. Um, one thing that you have to keep in mind is where you are. Um, in reference to either being too forward or too back. So basically you do not want to be leaning so far back that they can just, you don't <laughs> do that exactly. So you do not want to have your weight backwards like this. That is tip number one. Um, and also from a standpoint, all right, so I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a really good tip that basically you are going to get double your learning from classes. Any time that they are teaching you an escape from a negative position, so let's say you're Gary and you're trying to escape from this position, look at it from two perspectives. One, obviously look at it from the perspective of Gary and escaping, but also know that when you are trying to maintain a dominant position, what you will be answering is the first move of the escape. So think about that. Gary's first move to escape this is going to be the first move that I am going to have to defend and respond to. So let me give you an example. One of the most common escapes from mount is a bridge and roll. And in order to complete a bridge and roll, the first step is to trap my arm. So go ahead and trap my arm. So this looks like that. And then I get rolled, go ahead and bridge and roll. I get rolled over. <laughs> and I've lost the position. Now there are two ways to avoid this. The first is making sure he never gets my arm in the first place. And the second is to get my arm back. So that's why when you first get into mount, it is pivotal that you know exactly what to do and exactly where to go. Because especially if you're going up against a more experienced person, they have already done this a thousand times. They already know what they're gonna do. You need to know what you're gonna do. Um, so one thing that I really like to do is to make sure that they don't get my hands. And in order for me to do this, what I do is I like to go like this. So I'm basically keeping my feet curled underneath him, I'm keeping my legs tight to him and I am spreading out my weight and keeping my hands long. And basically being like a sack of potatoes, you know, you don't wanna be so stiff that it makes it easier for them to bridge and roll you. If you keep loose, and sometimes too, this is kind of funny, but like if, <laughs> if you're rolling against somebody who is a little bit new and they're not used to like the pressure or, you know, getting muffled, um, or having fabric in their face. Like if you put like fabric in their face, like <laughs> sometimes that could be beneficial uh, for you because they kind of panic a little bit. I guess it can work both ways because if somebody's really panicky, sometimes that works against you too because they just end up flailing and it's just more panic for you to control. But moving on, so A, I don't let him capture my hands. So that's why I'm spread out like this evenly. Or if he does capture one of my arms, one move that you can do is basically just 
rip it out and reestablish. All right. So tip number one is to know the escape and to have a response for the first move in that escape. Um, another escape that I've seen, oh yes, and also there's different area for mounting somebody. Um, there's a high mount, a low mount, and a medium mount. Um, so basically what you want to think about is when you are in mount, besides, you know, obviously maintaining, if you can slide your legs up into their armpits, um, that's also a better position. So just think about that. Um, so here's something else too. Uh, when you are in the, when you have somebody mounted and you go for a submission, typically, um, especially for beginners, a typical submission that they'll have you do is um, a basic collar choke. So you feed one arm in and you have to get the other one across. Now, what I want you to focus on as a, as a, as a concept that is true for a lot of moves in jujitsu is your head position. Because if you focus on your where your head is in space, you know, obviously your body is going to follow. So think about if I'm here in his center line, right? And he goes for that bridge and roll to get me to go that way. What do you think I can do? Where should my head position, position be to make it the most difficult for him? Like if I'm here, does that make it easier for him to roll me that way? if I'm here or if I'm here, right? So if he is trying to make me go that way and I have my collar here, he's gonna wanna make me try to go this way because this way I have a post. I have my hand and I have my head. So that's another thing. In order to prevent getting bridge and rolled, you have a post that you can work with. So you have an arm post. So let's say I'm trying to get this right here. I typically, this is a great move to do. I'll go far out, right? That way it makes it very difficult for him to roll me that way. And then in order for me to get this hand over here safely, I just rainbow across like that. So that rainbow action, that moving hand acts as a moving post. That way, by the time I, I'm getting over here into danger land, I have, I can cross post or I can post with my head. So always think about first, first get into your position, your mount position, you know, flat and wide, right? Until you, until you get your breath. And then maybe you want to go for that collar choke. So you need to make sure that you are off to one side, right? That way they can't bridge and roll you to the other side. And you have your post that can go straight out on the same side. You can also post on the other side and you can use your head. So, as a review, <laughs> when you first get into, when you first have somebody mounted, right, make sure that everything is nice and tight, your feet are tucked under their butt, just go wide and establish a good low base. That way you can avoid them trying to grab your arm. If they do grab your arm, they're trying to do a bridge and roll. So the best way to defend against this is A, not letting them get your hand in the first place, but if they do get your arm, to swim out and reestablish. Now, if you are trying to go for a submission, like if you're gonna to try to go in their collar, you have to remember which way they're going to roll you, right? He's not gonna to wanna to roll me this way because I have a very easily accessible posting hand, right? He is, especially him being a purple belt, is trying to time it so that let's say I'm here and I'm going across here, he's probably gonna to try to bridge and roll me right here before I can get that post across. So just think about, Think about where your head is and where you're most vulnerable at when, when you're doing these things. And especially as a beginner, I would just say, get your feet in tucked, tucked flush against his butt, everything's tight and you're flat and wide. And then as you progress, then you can start leaning over, right? Like this is a lot more difficult for him to bridge and roll me when I'm here 
than if I'm right here. Like if you're trying to do a collar choke like this, you are gonna get bridged and rolled. Like there's no, there's no doubt about that. But if you're all the way extended over here, you have all of your weight that he now has to, or she now has to deal with in order to get you bridge and rolled. Um, now, there have been times where I've been um, in this position and somebody has straight up, like, gone on my hips and bench pressed me up. <laughs> like that, like that, <laughs> which is so annoying. Um, so one thing that you need to keep in mind is to keep like that constant pressure and your heel and your feet, let's turn to the side. Yeah. And your feet curled under like this. And if you're like this and they're trying to bench press you up, um, one thing that you can do too is grapevine the legs. So do you see how I take my leg and I go like this? And then you can push your hips into them. And what this does is creates a lot of pressure on them. Even if you are a smaller person, you can still generate a lot of force. Mm -hmm. And also, <laughs> how's that for you? And, so <laughs> and also, if their hands are down, right by your hips trying to do that move, that leaves their neck wide open. So if you see somebody trying to bench press you up and you know initially they didn't have they didn't do a good job because you have this tightly against their butt and you know you're secure here um, but you see they're that they're still trying to do the bench press move try doing the grapevine or even go right into the grapevine play with this right and try really driving your hips in and just seeing how much you can like <laughs> make them suffer because that's the fun part of jiu-jitsu <laughs> all right now moving on to um a third escape so the first escape that we just reviewed is if they try to do a bridge and roll and the first thing that you're going to see is they're going to try to capture your hand in order to make that happen um for that bench press move <laughs> bench press escape i personally haven't seen that as frequently as the first escape and the third escape that I'll, I'll go over in a second. Um, but as long as you have a really good grip on them with your legs and with your feet and you know that you can always do the grapevine as well, um, that'll, keep, that'll put you in, in a really good position. And then also knowing that if their hands are not by their neck, then they're leaving that completely exposed. And you know, the, the cool thing about jujitsu is you're either going to be offensively minded or defensively minded, right? So I'll tell you one thing, if somebody's trying to bench press you and then all of a sudden you're going for their neck, they are not going to be <laughs> as fully committed or concentrating on bench pressing you had you not have gone for their neck. Um, so anytime that you see that their hands are away from their own neck, protecting their own neck and on your hips, then you have the green light. So the last, can we go back into the original? Mm -hmm. All right, so the last escape that we're going to cover is also very, very common. It is equally as common to, to bridge and roll, and that is the knee in escape. So do you want to do the knee in escape? Uh, getting one knee out here. Yep. All right, so this is the knee in escape. And what you are going to feel is you are going to feel somebody trying to bridge you. And then, so this is a bridge. So do you want to bridge this to the state? Yep, so that is a bridge. So basically, as a beginner, what you're going to feel is you're going to feel your opponent's hip raising up and then angling out. And then you are going to feel his or her knee trying to come up in this area right here on either side, on either leg, right? So if you feel that somebody is bridging and trying to get their knee in between this area where your thigh is, then they are trying to go in for the knee and escape. Um, so to prevent this, uh, the number one way that I respond to somebody trying to do this is I attempt to get into the 
um, technical uh, mount position or S mount. So basically if somebody tries to bridge and roll, I'll try, I'll go here and then I'll try to, I'll put my <laughs> post right in front of their face. If you can see this, you can look back up. Mm -hmm. So he tries to do the knee and escape. I'll switch here and I'll put a post, basically just my hand right in front of his face right here. Um, that way he doesn't have anywhere to move. Gary <laughs> hates it when I do this back to him rolling. <laughs> Very annoying. <laughs> so annoying. Um, so, <laughs> all right, so what did we learn today? We learned that anytime you are in class and they're teaching an escape, you can learn a couple things. You can learn A, how to escape by imagining yourself being in, in the person in the negative position, but you also know your opponent's first move when you're in the positive position, when you are the person that has, you know, another person mounted, you know what their first move would be to escape. And if you have a response to somebody's first move, like there are techniques, you can ask your instructor, but there are techniques and responses to everything. <laughs> so if you find yourself like always losing mount because of this situation happening, just formulate what is happening in, in a question that's very descriptive. Like when I am on in, when I have somebody mounted and I go from, for a caller uh, submission, I always get rolled. Like what can I do? Um, if you come to your coach or an upper belt with a question like that, you will get the answer. And I highly recommend doing this, especially if there's something that's happening over and over and over and over again that's frustrating you. It's very easy <laughs> to like not say anything and just be like, oh, I suck. But if you can look at it um, objectively and just look at it like a chess game, like it's a video game, like you're, it's not even you in there. You're just controlling your body <laughs> from up above against somebody else's body then it's very easy to be able to be objective about it um so we first went over being bridged and rolled so the first thing your opponent is going to do is your your opponent's going to try to capture your arm so to make sure that your arms are inaccessible is a very good way to go and if you move up um, in complexity and you have them out and you're trying to do a submission, just know that like, for example, when you put your hand in to the collar, you know, you're basically giving your hand up for them to capture it because it's right there. So if you then can implement ways to have your head be directionally opposing the direction that they're going to be bridging and rolling you, um, then you have the ability to shut that move down because you're using another vector against their vector. And so that cancels out. It's like physics, right? <laughs> Literally, it is physics. Um, so that was the bridge and roll. There's a, another technique that I've only seen used a couple of times on me and that's just the straight bench press. Um, yeah, great fine, definitely. But if you also have a very good mount position from the get-go with your with the with your legs tight to their torso and your feet wrapped under their their butt then then that's going to be you're, you're not just going to get <laughs> tossed up you're at least going to have some time to be able to respond to that by putting in a grapevine and, and going for a collar uh, especially since their hands are going to be low and they're not going to be able to protect their neck um and then finally we went over the knee and escape so um in addition to the responses of not letting things happen in the first place, like the arm capture for the bridge and roll, and having a response to it, like swimming your arm out, um, there are also different positions that you can go to in order to still maintain a good position. And one way to do that is to go from a regular mount to technical mount or, or S mount, as some people like to call it. 
Um, so that's also another pattern that's prevalent throughout jujitsu is you can either try to hold on to the position that you're in and end up getting into an even worse position, like having them be in your guard, or if you feel that a position you're about to get, they're about to escape and you're about to lose it, if you know another position that's even, that would be better than the one you'd go into if they had escaped, if you know another position that you can then uh, transition to that's also like equally great and equally dominant, then, or even a little bit less, but it's still better than where you'd be if they had succeeded in their escape. Know those positions. Um, that way you can have an easy way of getting into another position that you would rather be in um, over being lower in the positional totem pole and having to then work your way back up. Whew. <laughs> that was a lot of information, I'm sure. Um, so those are the key takeaways. Um, also, especially, you know, if you're a female going into this one, really good trick is to make sure that you're aware of where your weight is distributed. Um, I'll show, I'll, I'll give you a little, a tidbit right here. All right, so if you wanna lay down. So this just happened to me the other day, actually. I was here, right? And I was rolling against somebody that was, he must be like 220, right? And when I would get here, I would get rolled that way. And I was like, I was getting frustrated. I was like, okay, can we go back in that position? Because I, I think I wanna try to like maintain it. So if I had just my head more towards this way, even in this type of judo side control position, it is, that principle is still valid. So it's just, it's very interesting in jujitsu how like you can see these principles and you can see them come up over and over and over again. So it's really cool. So um, just think about that. Think about any time that you are having trouble maintaining a position, think about where your weight is distributed and where your head is. And I bet that will give you a clue um, as to the solution. Anything to add? You <laughs> had a cover, Crystal. All right. um, so thank you so much for watching. Um, Realize BJJ at gmail.com. And I just, you know, you're going to be doing something that's like a really awesome pastime. And the really cool thing is it's these skills are transferable, um, like to self-defense, which is a really cool cool thing to know. And it's always good to be able to know how to control somebody else, um, especially if you are in a situation where you have to defend yourself, or in most cases, when you have a person that does jujitsu, they're actually coming to the aid of helping somebody else. So knowing how to control somebody's torso um, can be very helpful in situations, um, not only when you're you know on the mat trying to get a submission, but in situations that uh, involve real life. Okay, realizebjj at gmail.com and until next time.